Hey everyone, welcome to a new video in FEA using SOLIDWORKS. So in this video, we'll be learning how to set up a frequency analysis using SOLIDWORKS simulation. So let's proceed with the lecture by looking at what a frequency analysis is and why do we do it and then finally proceeding uh, to perform a simulation to understand how we can do a frequency analysis using SOLIDWORKS. So frequency analysis. So any material vibrates on its own natural frequency even when it's at rest. So before we use any part in an assembly, we tend to study the frequency at which it naturally vibrates to make sure that the operating range of the model doesn't fall near this frequency. This is to make sure that the amplitude of vibration of the model and the assembly doesn't multiply to produce a displacement much large enough to disturb the assembly. So this particular phenomenon is called a resonance wherein the frequency of the motion of a part matches with its natural frequency the amplitude multiplies thus resulting in resonance. So it's very crucial to perform a frequency analysis on any part before using it in any uh, mechanical system. A material vibrating at its natural frequency has a tendency to displace in any direction. This tendency is studied by looking at the mode shapes at the vibrating frequencies. The displacement produced at the natural frequency of the material are referred to as mode shapes and this mode shape can vary from material to material. That is. If you have a material producing a mode shape and, and at the same frequency, the mode shape created by a different material will be different. Also, if a material produces a set of mode shapes at a specified frequency, for the same frequency, the same material will produce a different set of modes if the loading conditions are changed. This will make more sense if we we'll just look at a simulation to understand this phenomenon. Let's open SOLIDWORKS, click on this file and open a new part, choose a plane and right click sketch draw a rectangle before you dimension it make sure you are in the desired unit system I have chosen millimeters now right click on the sketch again edit sketch dimension the same as 50 mm and 25 mm So this way we have specified the cross section of the beam that we are going to analyze. Now click on the features, select the extrude option here and input a value of 1000 mm that is 1 meter. So this will be our beam. Click OK. Now let's proceed with the simulation. Create a new frequency study. Click OK. I'm going to use the default alloy steel material and first perform a 3D frequency analysis. So right click on the fixtures, click fixed geometry. Here I'm going to apply a fixed constraint on either ends of the beam. Thus, this is a fixed beam. Right click and create a mesh. I'm going to use the default uh, mesh. This looks pretty decent to proceed with. Now right click on the frequency, click on properties. Here we have several options to specify to the solver to uh, proceed with the simulation. I'll talk uh, in detail about each of the specification in the lecture. So let's click OK. Now right click on the frequency and hit run button. So our simulation is done here. Let us have a look at it. So this is our first mode shape. Let me animate it at a much faster speed. And similarly, we have the second mode shape. You can see this is in the other direction. Previously, our mode shape was vibrating in the y direction, and this one is vibrating in x direction. So, see the vibration is along the x direction, while for the first mode shape, it was on the y direction. If you look at the third mode here, we have a node in between these two mode shapes. So let's animate. And we have one, two, and three modes in this mode shape. Now, similarly, if I have a look at the fourth mode shape, it's in the other direction. Now finally, the fifth one will have an additional node. So we have one. 2, 3 and a 4. Okay, 
This is a 3D frequency analysis that we have done currently. But let's look at the results. If you are going to proceed using a 1D or a 2D analysis on this beam. So to do that, right click and copy the study. This is frequency 1D analysis. Click OK. And now since we'll be performing a 1D analysis, right click on the solid part and treat it as a beam. After we define this as a beam, all the constants need to be redefined. So right click on the fixtures, click edit definition. Now clear all the previous selections, select these two joints here and click OK. Once uh, you have defined the fixtures properly, go ahead and mesh the geometry. You won't be given any options to mesh the geometry because it's a 1D mesh. Now right click and run the simulation. We have arrived at the same result that we had from a 3D analysis. You can even have a uh, look at the resonant frequencies by right click on the results and list resonant frequencies. So this is the first uh, resonant frequency occurs at 133 hertz and the second is 267. It goes on. If you look at the 3D analysis and right click on the results, list the re resonant frequency. It's almost the same results. So before we infer anything, let's proceed with the 2D analysis. Right click on the study. Rename it as frequency 1 2D. Click OK. Since we need to create a 2D part, right click on the geometry. First convert it into a 3D by clicking on tree test solid, which was previously there. Now that we have got our 3D geometry back, Right click on the geometry and open the shell manager, select the space, input a thickness of 3mm and click OK. So once we do that, right click on the fixtures again, edit definition and choose this edge as well as this edge to constrain the geometry. Now right click on the mesh, create mesh. We will use the default mesh, right click on the frequency, run the analysis. Since we have defined the thickness of this part wrongly, let's go ahead and right click on the shell definitions here. Make sure you input a value of 25 mm for the thickness here. By defining this as 25 mm, we accurately represent the 3D model which was 25 mm thick using this uh, shell here. Now right click rerun the simulation. Then right click on this results, list the resonant frequencies. You, you can notice that we have arrived at the same set of resonant frequencies as we have received from the 1D and the 3D analysis. Right click on the second mode shapes and animate it. Similarly for the third, fourth and the fifth. Now that we have understood the different shapes that is produced by a material when constrained by a given boundary conditions. Let's go ahead and duplicate the same study with the same material. I'm, I'm going to perform a 3D frequency analysis on the same material but with the different boundary conditions. This time I'm going to right click on the fixed constraint, remove one of the face that we have selected. That is I'm going to use fixed uh, constraint on one side. My beam will behave as a cantilever beam right now and run the simulation. You can see my first mode shape vibrates in such a direction and my second mode shape differs and my third this looks a little bit different than the both side fixed uh, beam. So you notice that there were major changes in the mode shapes for the same material for different uh, loading conditions. So let's proceed with the uh, presentation. So SOLIDWORKS provides you with two solvers to solve your frequency analysis. They are namely FFE plus and a direct sparse solver. So as mentioned in the slide, so FFE plus is going to use a iterative solving technique to solve for the unknowns. While the direct sparse solver uses a direct inversion technique to find the unknowns. Each method has its own pros and cons. In case you want to study more about how these solvers work, 
take a standard uh, finite element analysis book and refer about solving a matrix iteratively and direct inversion. In case if you are not worried about uh, how the solver solves for the unknowns, just consider it as a black box approach and proceed for, uh, with your simulation. So since since both the solvers use different techniques, the computational time that each solver will take will vary between them. SOLIDWORKS has provided us with different options before we to set up our frequency analysis. The first one being specifying the number of frequency that we want to look at. That is, for a given metric under a specified load condition, we can look at n number of mode shapes. But by specifying the number of frequency we want to look at, we restrict the solver to stop a given set of mode shapes. Secondly, we can specify the frequency range between which we want to look at the different mode shapes produced. Finally, using the upper bound frequency option, we can fix a upper limit beyond which the solver will not proceed further to find any mode shapes. We'll look at them and this is how the options look like in a SOLIDWORKS simulation environment. You navigate to this by right clicking on the frequency analysis and selecting the options there. Incompatible bonding options. So if your model is going to consider of several contacts between parts inside the model, the nodes may not be perfectly matched with each part in order for a force to be transferred. So SOLIDWORKS as a set of algorithm to tackle this problem. This problem can arise because the geometries are not even throughout, the mesh size is not uh, consistent throughout. In order to tackle this pro problem, SOLIDWORKS uh, provided us with three options. The first one is the automatic, the second is the simplified, and the final one will be the more accurate option. The automatic option is the default option chosen by si SOLIDWORKS simulation, wherein it considers both the surface as a whole to define any contact. But in case if this approach is found to be slower, the solver automatically chooses node to surface option to proceed with the simulation. Secondly, we have simplified option which uses node based contact definition. At last, we have a, a more accurate solution which is going to take a longer time but yields good results by using the surface to surface contact alone. The other options provided by the solver are you can choose if you want to simulate the in-plane effects of a geometry. That is, if you consider a long beam, when you subject to it to a compressive force, for the same load as the object deforms, the stiffness of the material is going to increase because there is a variation in the cross-section. While if you are going to elongate the same part, due to the thinning of the cross-section, the material softens. So this is called the in-plane effects. In case if you want to switch this effect to be on or off, that is if you want your solver to check for the stiffness depending upon how the cross section of the model has changed, you can choose this option. Finally, we have the soft spring options. This comes into play when you don't have a proper uh, boundary condition or constraint to fix the geometry in that environment. You can use this option only when SOLIDWORKS prompts you to do so. Then we have the slow and the thermal effects. Apart from using a uh, component in a vibrating environment, a building structure can be acted upon by a wind which has its own frequency of flowing over the building. And we can study uh, the effects of this flow frequency on the building by adding it into the loads. Similarly, thermal effects can also be studied by uh, specifying the temperature and frequency of uh, heating or cooling up. So now let's proceed. So this is how the options for uh, flow and thermal effects uh, frequency analysis is going to look like. Now to the results that we get from a frequency analysis, we get to look at different mode shapes at different resonant frequencies. We can also have a list of resonant frequencies for a given part with the mass participation factors. That is the contribution of a particular part along with its mass in a particular mode shape. So this way you can increase or decrease the mass to reduce the effects of the vibration. Finally, we can plot the resonant frequencies against the mass. So now let's proceed to perform a frequency analysis on a printed circuit board using SOLIDWORKS. Open SOLIDWORKS. Click on the file options. Click here for new part. Click on the open. And navigate to the part file provided to you. I'm going to use PCB circuit. You will be provided with this geometry to practice this exercise. Let's proceed with the simulation. Any printed circuit board has a set of components which is going to be soldered over to the board to perform a given set of uh, operations. So when this particular printed circuit board along with its components is placed on a mechanical system, the vibration on the mechanical system do not fail the soldering connections of the electronic components in, uh, in this printed circuit board. So we do a frequency analysis to study the vibration pattern of this printed circuit board and using that information, 
we'll make sure that the operating frequency of the mechanical system does not in induce a failure in this printed circuit board. Further, the soldering strength is also enhanced after performing a frequency study in the, in the printed circuit board. Let's proceed with the simulation. Click on a new study, choose the frequency system and re rename it as per your convenience. Change it as test1. Click OK. Now before you proceed any, any further, click on the part here. Right click on the part. This is our printed circuit board. So to apply the material, select apply material, navigate to the plastics, select PBT general purpose and click apply. So for these two microprocessors, I'm going to select the gold as the material. After doing that, select all other operands and for time being, click apply edit material and apply the default alloy steel. Now that we have defined all the materials, let's go ahead and define the connections. So right click on the fixtures, click fix geometry. Since this board will be fixed onto a system by adding screws on this holes, let's select the surface and fix the geometry. Make sure you zoom in and select the desired entities. Zoom in further, select the face here. Zoom out, zoom in, select this face here and click OK. Now that we have defined the uh, fixtures and the materials, let's go ahead and mesh the geometry. Create mesh. I'm going to use a mesh parameter with a minimum size of 2mm. Click OK. If you have a part in this geometry which is smaller than your minimum edge limit, your mesh will fail. So in my case, I have successfully created the uh, mesh. I need not worry about uh, refining it a little bit further. And let's go ahead and run the simulation. Okay, looks like our simulation is done and we have got 5 frequencies here since we have uh, not changed any settings here which by default had 5 frequency. So let's look at them one by one. So this is how our first mode frequency is going to vibrate. Now the second one. Now right click on the results. Look at the list of resonant frequencies. Here you can see our first uh, resonant frequency is at 40 Hz. The second one is, is at 56 and the third one is at 116. So when you are going to use the same component in any system, you make sure that your system does not operate at any frequencies near this in order to avoid any damage to your electrical circuits or electronic components inside it. So now we have successfully completed a frequency analysis on a PCB board. You have been given a challenge related to frequency analysis. So go ahead, try that challenge. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.